Hello, fifth graders. Today we're going to learn a little bit more about fresh water. So on Monday, we discovered some information about fresh water and salt water and how people need fresh water in order to survive. It's what we use for everything. And today we're going to um, learn a little bit more about where we can find fresh water. So from Monday, how, how much of Earth's water is fresh water? Do you guys remember? Yes, 97% of the water on Earth is salt water and only 3% of the water on Earth is fresh water. So do you guys have any ideas of where we can find fresh water on Earth? There are actually five sources. See how many you can think of. We can find fresh water in lakes, wetlands, rivers, groundwater, and glaciers. Wetlands are areas of land that are saturated or soaked with water. Um, you guys know what lakes and rivers are. Groundwater you learned last year. It's the water that soaks into the ground. And glaciers are frozen masses of ice. So we're going to learn how much fresh water we can find in each of those five places. Now, for, just like we made a pie chart graph on Monday, you can make one today also. And if you want to make that graph with me um, to show where we can find the sources of fresh water, you need a piece of paper, pencil, and then three colored crayons. I used green, blue, and yellow. Um, when you have your materials, press play, and you can find out what percentage of our fresh water is found in each of those sources. So if you're going to go gather materials, press pause now. When you get back, you can press play. All right, welcome back. Here are the places where we can find fresh water. Play this. All right, hello, fourth grade scientists. Today, we are going to learn more about fresh water. So on Monday, we made a model of the water on Earth, and we saw that 97% of water on Earth is salt water and only 3% is fresh water. You also made a pie chart to show that, and we see so much more of our Earth's water is salt water than fresh water. And we learned that fresh water is the water that we need for drinking, for watering our crops, for feeding our animals, for making products. We can't use salt water for any of those kinds of things. So this fresh water is so important. Today, we're gonna to take a closer look at where that water comes from. So on Monday, this was our fresh water. Um, but we're going to look just at fresh water. So I measured out the same exact amount. So this is a 3%. This is 60 milliliters of water. And we're going to divide that up into the places where we find um, fresh water. So there are actually five places on Earth where you can find fresh water. We can find it in lakes, in wetlands. Wetlands are areas of land that are saturated with water or soaked with water. Rivers, actually you can kind of think of swamps too with wetlands. Rivers, which I know you guys know what that is. Groundwater, we learned about in fourth grade. That's where, when it rains, the water soaks into the ground. And glaciers, which are frozen masses of ice. Those are the places where you can find fresh water. So we're going to make this model just like we did on Monday. And we're going to divide up our fresh water into how much of the percentage we find in lakes, wetlands, rivers, groundwater, and glaciers. So the first thing I have to do, I'm going to use this little tiny syringe, and I'm going to measure out 0.16 amount. So I have to pull this up and put that in, and then a little bit more to get the lakes. So this is how much water of the fresh water we would found, find in lakes. It's a very small amount. And you guys can probably picture how big like Lake George is. It's a lot of water, but compared to the amount of fresh water on Earth, it's a very small percentage of it. That would be our lake water. Wetlands, I actually have to use this little pipette, and I have to only put 10 drops in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. I think it's about ten. And so you can see wetlands is a very, very small amount of fresh water. Well, rivers are even smaller, only two drops. One, two. Um, and we're not going to color either of those because it's such a small amount. Only two drops of the fresh water would be found in rivers. Now, groundwater is a little bit more. 
the amount of fresh water and groundwater I have to measure out, 18 milliliters. So I'm gonna use this bigger syringe. I'm gonna go up to 18. Here's my key. Then the next biggest part is where we find groundwater. And then we have our little slice of lakes. And then for wetlands and rivers, I didn't even color them in. It's a very, very small percentage. And that shows where we get our fresh water from. Okay, so I hope you found that super interesting. Um, we are going to now learn a little bit more about one of those sources of water, which is groundwater. Um, because that was really where a lot of our fresh water came from. So I'm gonna show you a couple of videos. Again, this is from Mystery Science. I love the way Doug explains things. Um, he's gonna tell you a little story. We're not gonna do the activity for Mystery Science today, but his the story he tells about groundwater is super interesting. It will help you kind of imagine what groundwater looks like and where you can find it. Hi, it's Doug. When I was in sixth grade, something exciting happened. One day, I came home from school, and my mom and dad sat me and my sisters down. They had a big announcement. They said, we're going to move. Not away from town, but somewhere close by. It'll be a new house. Now, I knew exactly what they had in mind. You see, my whole life, my dad had been talking about his dream to one day have a backyard with a pond in it. Now, that might sound like a strange thing to want in life, but the thing you have to understand about my dad is that he loves growing flowers and trees. He loves landscaping. And for him, a pond was like the ultimate setting for the most beautiful garden. He wanted to grow lily pads and have flowers all along the banks and maybe even have a little fountain in the middle. He was so excited. I was excited too. I wasn't as wild about gardening as he was. For me, that was usually a chore. But the thing I got most excited about was all the possible animals I'd now get to spend my time catching. You see, my cousins lived near a pond, and I remember my cousin Mikey taking me out in a little rowboat when I was younger, and I got to catch a turtle in that pond. I thought that was very cool. Maybe now I'd be able to catch things like turtles and frogs in my own pond. So I said to my parents, I can't wait. This is going to be awesome. Where is this pond? Can we go see it now? We got in the car and drove out to the site of the new house. When we got out of the car, I was confused. There was no pond anywhere. I thought, uh, Dad, are you sure you got the right place? Where's the pond? He explained, well, there isn't a pond here. Yet, we're going to make one. Make a pond? I was surprised. I didn't know that was a thing you could do. Like, dig a hole and fill it with water? That sounds like a lot of work. Now, luckily, as my dad explained, he knew someone who owned an excavator who agreed to come out and dig the hole. But I said to my dad, so where are you going to get the water from? There's no hose or faucet around here or anything yet. I knew that was how people filled up swimming pools. My dad laughed a little. Oh, right. He said, 
You have no idea how this works, do you? I didn't used to know either. It's okay. I guess I had no clue. I said, oh, like, are we going to have to wait for rain to fill it up or something? My dad shook his head. No, we weren't going to do that either. Okay, well, if you weren't going to fill it with water from a hose, and we're not going to wait for the rain to fill it up, then how is there going to be water in this pond? Where's the water going to come from? My dad pulled a shovel out of the trunk of the car. Watch this, he said, and he started to dig a little hole. When he dug the hole down to a few feet, he said, look in there. What do you see? To my amazement, there was water. How is that possible? What do you think? Why did my dad hit water when he dug down? So how is that possible that there's water in this hole? How did the water get underground? And right now, if you want to press pause, you can draw your idea on a piece of scrap paper. You can tell someone about it, or you can just think it in your head. Um, and most of the time, if you want to press pause now, you can. Now, most of the time, kids have some experience with this. A lot of you have been to the beach, either at a lake or at the ocean, and you have dug a hole in the ground when you're building a sandcastle and without even bringing a bucket of water up from the beach your hole fills up with water and that's because of groundwater and the water what they call the water table when you're near a lake or a body of water is really high so it's really easy to get to that water it's not that deep under the ground now for some of you if you go out in your backyard and you dig a hole you would have to go down really really far before you could get to the water um, but for those of you who have been to a beach that water is really close to the surface so you can dig the hole and get to it right away. All right, let's find out a little bit more about groundwater. Why was there water in the hole once my dad started digging down? It turns out this is something that's true in many places, not just where we were digging. If you dig into the ground, as you're digging at some point, you might notice that the hole starts to become wet. It starts to fill with water. Now, you won't always find water right away. Sometimes you have to dig really deep down, like this man is doing. It's possible you've even seen this already for yourself. If you've ever had the chance to dig down in sand, like at the beach, say you're starting to make a sand castle or something. As you dig, what you can notice is that the sand becomes wet. And if you keep digging, look at this. This boy has dug down into the sand and the hole filled with water. But whether it's a hole in sand or in dirt, where is this water coming from? How did it get underground? As you might have guessed, it has something to do with rain. Now, you might know, especially if you did our earlier unit, Work of Water, that when it rains on hills or mountains, that water flows downhill. Some of that water forms rivers most of which eventually flow towards the ocean. But does all rainwater flow into rivers? Well, as digging these holes reveals, apparently it doesn't. In fact, a lot of rainwater seeps into the ground and somehow stays down there unseen. Why is that? What's going on? Well, rather than just telling you about this, let me show you. My friend Amy put together this model. It's really helpful for understanding what's going on. Amy put gravel into this plastic box to represent the ground. Now imagine this is me standing on the ground. All I see and feel is dry ground. There's no water here. Now suppose I use a watering can so that I've got water falling from above, just like rain would do in the real world. That rainwater seeps down into the ground. It disappears from sight. I don't think about it anymore. But suppose now I dig down into the ground. If I dig down, if I make a hole in the ground, I might just discover that at a certain level below the ground, oh, look at that. There's water down there. Now I've exposed some of that underground water. And look, in this case, I made a pond. Because this is a model, we can turn it and look at it from the side too. Watch as we dig now. Now you can see what's going on down there as I dig. When rain falls, the rainwater seeps down into the ground because there are spaces between the little bits of rock. The ground beneath our feet very often is made of things like this. 
It could be gravel or sand or just rock that has tiny spaces or pores. And so even though the land on the surface might be totally dry, there may be water under the surface in the spaces between the gravel or rock. Scientists call this type of ground by a special name, an aquifer, from the Latin words aqua, which means water, and fur, meaning to carry or hold. It's ground that can hold water, an aquifer. Now, my dad once described it to me as being somewhat like an underground lake. That's sort of helpful, but only as long as you're clear that it's not like a cave filled with water. An aquifer is not something you could swim in. It's just water between tiny spaces in the rock. Now, you might think that rainwater would just keep seeping downwards all the way to the center of the earth. But at a certain depth, you get to a layer of completely solid rock that doesn't have any holes in it. In our model here, that's represented by the bottom of the box. Without any spaces for the water to flow into, water can't seep down any further. And since water is a liquid that just seeps between pores of rock, notice also that the water underground forms a straight line. In fact, it doesn't matter what the landscape above looks like. Even if there's hills on top, the water line is still straight and the water seeps down as far as it can. So to summarize, sometimes there's water found underground, at least where the ground has tiny holes or spaces where rain can seep downwards. We call this water-filled ground an aquifer. The pond my dad dug was basically a big hole in the backyard where we exposed water that was already there in the ground. In other words, by digging that hole, we revealed water that was sitting in an aquifer. This is what most ponds and lakes are. This knowledge that in some places there's water below the ground, this isn't just useful knowledge for people who want to dig their own ponds. The existence of aquifers, underground water, is an even bigger deal than that. Think about it. Why might the discovery of an aquifer in the ground be important? Think back to our earlier mystery. So where do you think people get their water if they don't live near lakes or rivers? If you're thinking they get it from underground water sources like aquifers, then you are correct. So my last question before we move on to our final assignment about groundwater and freshwater is where do you think the water that we have that we're using here in Rotterdam, where does that come from? Now, if we were in class, I know a lot of you would raise your hand and you would tell me it comes from the faucet and it comes from pipes that go underground. And some of you might even talk about water filtration um, stations where water is being filtered and put through the um, pipes to get to your house. And that would all be correct. But the one thing that you need to know is where does the water come before that? And I would say, where does the water come before the pipes? And where does the water come before the water filtration system? And the answer is from an aquifer. We have an aquifer in Rotterdam. That is where our water is coming from. And I like to tell a story about my family. My great grandmother, her family, she was a little girl. They moved here from Poland and they were looking for a place to live. And they heard about Rotterdam and what Rotterdam was known for, and this was a long time ago, like over a hundred years ago, was for the delicious water. And my great grandmother always talked about how delicious our water is and I actually agree like I don't need to buy bottled water I think our water tastes great right out of the tap when you turn the faucet on um, we have such good clean delicious water here in Rotterdam and it comes from our aquifer um, if you guys have traveled other places you might notice that water tastes different or if you know someone who has a well their water might, might taste different than our water. And I just think the water in Rotterdam is the most delicious water, but that's my opinion. But that is where our water comes from. It comes from an aquifer. All right, so now that you know so much about salt water and groundwater, I am gonna have you answer some questions on a Google Docs today. So when you open that up, there's um, it'll look like this. Um, freshwater sources. You're going to put your name and your classroom teacher's name. Only two questions this week. What did you learn about freshwater on earth and what might be a problem with our water supply? 
So two things to think about. This second question is gonna, it's just giving me some an idea of what you might be thinking about what could be a problem with water because we're gonna talk more about that next week. This first question tells me how much you learned this week about fresh water. So give me some, any information to show me what you learned. All right, I hope you guys had fun learning about water and I will see you on Friday.